pleasure being here thank you for this opportunity to present the abstract and it's a pleasure to uh, interact with all of you my uh, paper is on the effect of enlegliptin on glycemic control through parameters of time in range using a, a continuous glucose monitoring technology or calling it the top ti study my the other investigators involved in con- this research were dr banshi sabu and dr suhas erande and the project was sponsored by glenmark so there is a need for glycemic assessment in diabetes hp1c is not enough you require to know the glycemic variability because glucose control can be affected by a lot of factors including renal failure hemoglobinopathy liver disease uh, hp1c does not tell us the fluctuations it does not tell us the glycemic excursions and therefore there is a need to move from hp1c fasting postprandial to also look at glycemic variability and hypoglycemia so it is very well known that for every uh, for every 10% decrease in tir the risk of retinopathy goes up by 60% uh, microalbuminuria goes up by 40% and peripheral neuropathy goes up by 25% So tenlegliptin is the most widely studied gliptin in India, and one of the uh, primary objectives of the study was to evaluate the percentage of time in range in people treated with tenlegliptin. A secondary outcome, we also took people above the range and below the range and looked at glycemic control. So this is a prospective multi-center open-label study for forty-two days, and we took people. uncontrolled on a stable metformin dose for more than 6 weeks and also having hp1c between 7.5 to 10.5 this study was done at three sites uh, myself at the chalaram diabetes institute dr banshi sabu at ahmedabad and dr sura sua zerande from pune so the cgm this was how the study was carried out the cgm was implanted on day 1 tenlegliptin was started from day 5 onwards CGM was then removed on day fifteen, and then tenlegliptin was continued on day thirty-two. A new continuous glucose monitoring device was implanted and continued. So there was a first CGM for ten days and a second CGM for the full uh, period. And uh, we looked at the pre-treatment phase, the immediate post-treatment phase one on tenlegliptin, and the second post-treatment phase two on tenlegliptin. And the dose of tenlegliptin was twenty mg. continuously for a duration of 6 weeks so this was the intention to treat population 59 people were studied and in the end 54 people completed it so the per protocol analysis is 54 and let's look at the fasting pp the fasting came down very well 175 to 150 post prandial 220 to 196 hp1c from 8.62 to 7.88 and if you look at the cgm parameters the time in range uh, the proportion of time spent in the day between 70 to 180 it was only 64.96% at baseline at the end of the first phase and the second phase the numbers increased to 75 and 75.7 and these differences were statistically significant now if you look at the time in range going up you can see that initially only 65% of the people had uh, 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 had a, the, initially only the mean time in range was only 65% it improved to 75% per, uh, which means that the average time in range after the first phase was 75% and at the end of phase 2 75.7% which means that at the end of the second phase the average time spent in control Uh, uh, by each patient was on an average seventy five percent. If you see the time above range, the time spent in hyperglycemia it came down from thirty one percent to twenty two percent to twenty percent. If you look at the glucose management indicator, also called E A one C, it is not to be confused with H B A one C. Glucose management indicator was seven percent, which came down to six point six four percent, and you can see all these differences were statistically significant. then we just took the people 
whose baseline time and range yeah, was bandana. already low <laughs> whose baseline time and range was already low uh, the mean time and range being 45% that improved to 63 and 73 at the end of the study with tenlegliptin and these differences were statistically significant and the mean values are also shown graphically here so some other there are some limitations of the study number one there was no control group here it was not placebo controlled or active comparator controlled but that was not the objective of the study uh, the objective of the study was to see whether tenlegliptin has an impact on time and range we found that tenlegliptin treatments significantly uh, reduced glycemic variability and improved the time and range at the end of the study uh, we looked at time and range time above range and time below range as quasi determinants of glycemic variability there was also significant improvement in time above range glucose management indicator there was also an improvement in a1c at the end of the study but that was again not the uh, uh, that not the aim of the immediate primary objective of the study and we also found that tenlegliptin led to a very early glycemic improvement the time in range improved in as little as a few days so baseline to 10 days itself we found that we also found tenlegliptin was well tolerated so i'd like to say i'd like to conclude by saying that tenlegliptin may be a promising drug to reduce glycemic variability in type 2 diabetes of course we require more studies to actually show uh, the importance uh, uh, and as importance of tenlegliptin in clinical practice it has been a pleasure talking to you discussing this topic with you and thank you for the opportunity uh, uh, to be here it's a pleasure